All right, this is D483347. Uh, Council, if you'd like to make appearances. Yes, Mark Smith, 11872, on behalf of Diana Buckley. And uh, good morning, ma'am. Francesca Rush, bar number 13011, appearing on behalf of Thomas Buckley, who is ready to appear by phone if you need his appearance. Okay, if necessary. Okay, why don't we... Uh, the court had received a fax from uh, defendant's counsel from a Dr. Scott J. Tushla. Um, did you get a copy of that, counsel? Yes, I did. Last All right, and it just says... Uh, that he is unable to travel at this time, basically based on his medical condition. Do you have any additional information, counsel? Yes, Your Honor. I did call the treating physician, uh, Dr. Tushla, and I discussed Mr. Buckley's case with him. Unfortunately, he hasn't seen the client, my client, for six weeks, so he doesn't have an updated status on what his current ability is, but um based on treating him he's surprised that he's alive currently so he does not foresee his ability to travel for trial within a year okay. well there there are some arrangements that the court could make uh, that we're probably going to need because right now we're set for trial in december correct um one it would be nice to know if he's would be able to do some type of Skyping or video um, conferencing that we could have him, you know, come into trial. There may be parts of the trial that if you talk with your client ahead of time, counsel, that you may be prepared, uh, for example, um, with examination of some of the witnesses of the, um, of the plaintiff and uh, the plaintiff herself that he may not n we may not necessarily need his presence for the entire but it'd be nice to know how you know how much time if we did the video conferencing and he didn't have to travel you know could we get in maybe you know four hours or you know be able to take breaks that would be helpful to know there may be some things that you again might be able to do as long as you are able to you know meet with your client um, at some point, counsel, if you need to take a trip to California, which would require some airfare and some, you know, housing expenses, um, the, the court, um, even though you're in a pro bono capacity, I believe the court would be able to provide some type of arrangements on that because there's, there's just no way that this court would be able to put this on hold for a year. Uh, to see what happens. I mean, we're going to have to have some finality, and the plaintiff is entitled to a divorce. Um, so those are some of the things that we potentially could, you know, look at some alternatives of having him being here uh, physically in court. Okay. And I did uh, talk to the, as I stated, I doc talked to the doctor, and he said that he will try to make a trip out to visit him uh, because the way he treats him and assesses him is traveling out to his current place of residence, which is in a Motel 6, and he will do an examination, he said hopefully within the next week, because I stated, well, we need an updated assessment of his physical and mental ability to participate in a trial. So he said he will try to get out there within the week. Hopefully I'll get an updated letter at that point. Uh, counsel, opposing counsel and I have spoken, and I really hope we will be able to take care of the outstanding issues outside of court without the involvement of a trial because I, I don't even think after a year, I think up until he passes, I don't think he'll be capable of participating in a trial. So I really hope we will be able to take care of them. Um, we have discussed all the outstanding issues. If you want me to address the court with those outstanding sure. issues. Why don't you go ahead? So I think that the first and foremost is the marital residence. I was able to discuss with my client what happened um, at, at or about the time that he was going through his surgery. He moved to California, and so he told the opposing party that um, at the time she could not afford the mortgage, so what he decided to do was rent it out to some renters. Uh, so as opposing counsel stated at the last hearing, there are currently renters residing in the marital residence. Originally, my client was using their rental payments to cover the mortgage, but between his Social Security 
payments and his daughter, he couldn't afford his medical payments, so he couldn't even afford the mortgage. So it has gone into a slight amount of um, arrears, which I'm getting the accounting of the current mortgage statements from my client now, and I'll provide that to opposing counsel. Uh, we agreed that if the uh, if the plaintiff does want to live in the house temporarily, she can do so. She will be responsible for um, taking possession of the residence, so evicting the current renters, as well as she will be responsible for taking over the mortgage because my client can absolutely not afford to pay the mortgage on top of all his medical expenses for the time being. Do we, do we know what kind of value that home has? And what is the mortgage amount? No, I believe I did do a simple Zillow assessment. But, but do we know what the the monthly payment is on that? I was told the monthly pay by by my client's daughter. I was told the monthly payment is about between a thousand and eleven fifty per month. Correct. And does that seem about right, ma'am? You know, I don't. I don't know what is going to happen with that marital residence. It doesn't appear that either of them are really in a great financial situation where they can pay that, and it may ultimately end up going the way of some type of a short sale or a foreclosure. Uh, but at least on a temporary basis, if the uh, renters and do we know if there's any actual contract? that the renters have signed? They had a short-term lease, which is up. Uh, I talked with them yesterday. Okay. And, because um, I told them I was coming into court, but Tom, has told, Tom and Kim have told them not to talk to me. I don't want to lose my home, because if I can get in there, I can get renters with me and be able to live in my home. Okay, so you think you can um, make out the financial arrangements not to lose the home? I can't make up the rears. On, on a moving forward basis. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well. And I already informed opposing counsel that I do believe it is my client's responsibility to pay those arrears because he had exclusive sure. possession of and, the residence at that time. And he was getting rent for it also. Right. So uh, he understands that that is his responsibility. He knows that he's in arrears. Um, so I will discuss with him like what his plan is to pay back those arrears because he has nothing at the moment but hopefully somehow him and his daughter will be able to cover that may i say one thing too yes. they made the september payment to him uh, and kim already now um they should turn that around and make this payment so otherwise we're four months in the rears and if i wait another month yep. to get into the house i can't make that payment either and i lose my home all right uh the court is going to order that they at least make the uh, September payment on the home, uh, and maybe both parties can talk to, the, you know, the bank as far as what to do on those arrears to to address that. Um, so as far as so, whatever whatever counsel whatever notice that you need uh, to provide to these uh, to this other to the renters to vacate. You can certainly, um, at this point, the court is going to um, order temporary um, exclusive possession of the marital home by the plaintiff that she will be able to provide whatever legal notice uh, required to have those parties vacate. Um, and I'm assuming if they've paid through September, they probably have at least a legal right You know, through that. I don't, right. d um, do we know if there's actual any contract that's been written are you aware of that ma'am there was um a six months lease that they signed but that's up now okay but do we know if there is any terms regarding renewing that lease or no i don't know that no but you know i mean if the if the lease hasn't been do you know when it expired no i don't okay well we can find that out but you know obviously if it's expired then it reverts to the month does your month. client counsel have a copy of that lease or the daughter or somebody I got conflicting information regarding a lease whether it was written or oral so I and she didn't 
provide the daughter didn't provide me with those documents so point, i will ask her uh, the court is going to order again that she have exclusive possession of the marital residence that uh she be allowed to provide uh, legal notice for the renters for them vacating that and then as soon as she's legally able to get into that home on whatever day that is that she'll be able to possess the home and to the extent that you have renters there somebody living there with you to assist you so you don't lose that home right. the court is making a finding that that is certainly in the best interest of the community okay. and so what we'll do is I'll take the order from today and I'll attach it to a letter to the tenants to you know to substantiate that and to support that um, All right. I think one other issue was the vehicle. Did you want to? Uh, yeah, as my client stated on the record, he didn't mind if uh, the plaintiff took the Taurus. I don't believe, he, you know, it is built to be able to handle him driving it. It's handicapped equipped. Is that the proper terminology? But I don't think he's capable of even driving it right now. So. Uh, he stated on the record, I discussed it with him, uh, she can have the Taurus. We do need to work out how she will get it. We don't have a plan for that, but I don't think that that will be an issue any longer. If they could, as she indicated to me this morning, if they could meet halfway, I guess they're in, in Simi Valley area, California, and if they could meet halfway, she'd be, that would work for my client. Right, Simi Valley is somewhere near Thousand Oaks. It's in the yes. valley, yeah, yes. right. So what, where would that be halfway, like Barstow um, maybe? Barstow. Barstow area. I can't confirm that my client will be okay with this at that, uh, with that plan at this time. My, my client's daughter works full time, so Could she be. would be the one doing the driving. In fact, I don't know how they would be able to do that. They would have to each have somebody drive them there. Right. Because... One, if she picks up the car, she's going to have to be driven there. And then if the daughter drops off the car, somebody's going to have to drive her, her back. So, uh, what's that? We'll go and pick she, it up. she can go all the way and pick it up if it will make it. It'll make it certainly easier and quicker. But, you know, obviously, we just need to make sure that it's currently registered and insured. And then she can take care of whatever she needs to in her name. But that was the problem that kind of ran us right. into this. Okay, so when would you like to pick it up, ma'am? Um, as soon as possible. If she talks to him, uh, it, it's not being driven. So um, what would be a good day? Huh? Tomorrow morning. They could go tomorrow. All right. L let me ask you this. Would it make any difference of doing it tomorrow morning versus Saturday? Um, uh, they work Saturday. And okay, then we'll, to... okay, then what time would you be able to be there then? Because I'm assuming you're going to leave in the morning here? Yes. Uh, so why don't we say maybe 2 o'clock? Is that right? 9 to 12. And how about between 2 and 3? Yes. Okay. And can we make it at um, the residence where him and my sister were living at the uh, Azure address that you have, uh, 565 Azure? It's the address that he represented that he was living at. Apparently she just indicated he's at a, a hotel right now, but it's in the same general area, I'm sure, right? Yeah, so if we meet there, then uh, I can pick up uh, the vehicle there. I can't confirm okay. right now that this why, is... Why don't we get him on the phone? Okay. That would be something that we could address and find okay. out where the vehicle is located at. Okay. And both parties should be acutely aware... Nothing? May I say something, Your Honor? Just real quick. If you feel you've received this message in error... Is that the 719-8029 number? No, that is not. Okay. Yeah, it's area code 
May I speak with Mr. Thomas Buckley, please? Hi, Mr. Buckley. This, uh, this is Andrea, Judge Gonzalez's courtroom clerk. We are on the record. Yes, sir. Is this Tom? Hello, this is Judge Gonzalez. Yes. Can you hear me okay? I can right now, yes. Okay. We were trying to work on arrangements to pick up the Taurus tomorrow sometime between 2 and 3, and we were wondering where it's currently located at. Right now I'm in uh, Ventura, California. Do you know where the car is? Pardon me? The Taurus, the car. Yeah. Do you know the address where it's located? In Ventura, California. Do you have a number for the daughter? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, sir, is your daughter present? No, she's not. Is anybody present there with you? She's not here right now. I have a nurse here with me. The daughter was probably at work. We, we, I do not want to send these folks down to uh, California, take a five hour drive one way. So we're gonna, you're, we're gonna need to get a hold of somebody who can guarantee that that vehicle's at a location where they can pick it up. It has everything regarding, you know, proof of insurance, proof of- We're gonna need to pick it up. I, I don't think we're gonna be able to use him right now. Okay. Is, you concur, counsel? Yes, sir. Okay, sir, we're, we're going to go ahead and make arrangements, and we're going to talk to your daughter. Um, so your attorney will talk to you later, okay? Okay. All right. We need to get a hold of the daughter. I, the, I'm, there's no way that I'm going to send them down there unless I have some guarantee that they're going to be able to pick up the car. That would just be, you know, salt in a wound. Of course. I have her cell phone number. I don't know if she'll be able to answer right now because, like I said, she's All right, probably well, this, this isn't something that we necessarily need to take care of court. The court is going to order. Now, as soon as we're done, you can call her, get her on. Um, I don't, why don't we try calling her right now then, see if she would pick up. You okay with that? All right. Kim? It's also Good morning, ma'am. This is Judge Gonzalez. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing fine, thanks. Um, we have um, Tom's attorney here in court. We also have Diana and her attorney here in court. And we are trying to make arrangements for her to go all the way out to uh, California to pick up the vehicle, the Taurus. But okay. I need, but if I'm sending them out there, uh, they're looking at driving out tomorrow morning, leaving sometime around 9 in the morning they would pick up the vehicle sometime between two and three but if i'm going to send them out there i want to make certain that the vehicle's at a location where it's accessible for them to pick it up and also that any proof of insurance or proof of registration is in that vehicle okay how do i get my dad transported with his wheelchair and all that well, my understanding, there is an agreement that um, she's going to have that vehicle. So I don't know as far as alternate um, transportation, and I don't know if there's any, you know, a, um, transportation available through, I don't the you know, through either the, because right now he's staying in, what, a Motel 6? 
Right. We sold my house. We were planning on moving back to uh, Las Vegas so that I could take care of him there. He needs his doctors. The doctor I have here isn't doing anything for him. And then with everything that's going on and Diana saying that she wants the house now, we're kind of in limbo. Well, um, the Taurus has a wheelchair ramp on the back of it. I guess there is another vehicle. It's a pickup truck. There's a right. Now, she, what about the car that she has now? What, what's going to happen to that car? Is she going to bring that car back? No, I can't drive it. Is she saying it's inoperable? Okay, and the Taurus has got a bad transmission. The truck has repairs. I just put eight, uh, $650 in repairs on the truck, and it needs another 350 well, uh, currently they're they're still married, and so she needs to have a vehicle that is operable. Um, okay. Additionally, uh, my understanding is that representations is that um, your father was receiving the rent money for the marital residence, and he has not been paying the rent. He's the been rent's been paid. I just paid the rent the other day. It is it is behind because. She was showing up at the hospital, harassing the people at the hospital, and I, I would not leave him in Las Vegas. There was no way I was going to leave him in Las okay. Vegas. So I paid $5,000 to transport him here by ambulance, which I had to use whatever sources I had available to get him here. There was no way I was going to leave him alone in Las Vegas with her um, harassing him and stalking him. Ma'am, my question uh -huh. is... My question was only regarding the, the house payment, and my understanding is you're saying that they are behind on the payment. Right. It is one, I believe, one month behind. Right. All right. So as to she needs to have either the Taurus or the truck, one of those she needs to have, and I need to make arrangements so that it's at a place that is accessible that there should be no discussion between the parties. It should be just a easy trans transfer of the vehicle. So, okay. do, so does the truck have current registration and? Uh, I'll, I'll have the tourist for her. I'll remove the handicap ramp and put it on the truck. Um, but okay. I mean, I think that he should get the other car back. Well, if so you, if she if can leave wanna... the other car back at the house in Vegas, I'll make arrangements to get that car. Leave the, leave the Explorer at, here in Vegas and she'll come and get it. Okay. Yes. Okay, sounds good. Um, if... Okay, and then I'll, I'll make sure that the um, Taurus is... I don't want her seeing my dad. I do not want her harassing my dad. I can bring she... the Taurus to my work tomorrow and she can pick it up at my work. Okay, what is that address, ma'am? It's 2896 West Telegraph Road, and that's in Fillmore. That's Telegraph Road? Yes, in Fillmore. And that's, what, what was the city? Fillmore, F-I-L-L-M-O-R-E. And, and it's 93015. Do you know the driving time from there to Las Vegas? Uh, it's... it's um, it's about 30 minutes closer than than where she would have to go to pick it up. So it's cutting about 30 minutes off her drive time. All right, so... It, it's just before Santa Paula. She knows where I lived in Santa Paula. So it's between Santa Paula and Valencia. All right, so... I'm going to give them a range, ma'am, probably... How late are you there at, at your work? I'm here until 4.30. Okay, so, okay, so they'll, they'll get there before 4.30. I have no idea what the traffic is going to be like going through the heart of Los Angeles. Um, so I want to make sure that they have some window of, of time there. Uh, should they just call you then, ma'am, when they show up at the work? or? Yeah, that's fine. She has my cell phone number. She can call that. Um, if she can make, you know, just if I don't answer, just leave a message as to her um, as to her time of arrival. And also, if they can just take the um, car and leave the keys with Amber at um, the house in Vegas, I'll arrange that up. Okay. And then um, 
Tom has counsel, so if, if you need to make further arrangements where they can coordinate on that, um, you can do it through his counsel, okay? Okay, all anything, right. Anything else, counsel? No, I think that's it. Okay, all right. Appreciate it, ma'am. You have a good day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, any other temporary issues that we need to address today? Uh, Your Honor, the mortgage company called me yesterday. They have no phone number for Kim or Tom. Kim, Kim, would the court give permission for my client to convey that information to the mortgage company? Or, or would counsel have any objection to that? I have no objection to it, but I would prefer to run it by my clients before just okay. giving that. They're calling me because it's three months in the rears. I'll, I will tell both Kim and Thomas to contact the mortgage company okay. themselves. Okay. All right, and uh, that information should be shared amongst both parties, so whatever you know, information is out there, we need to make sure that both parties, and, and you're able to talk to the insurance company also, correct? Uh, yeah. I, I call and get the information, and as of uh, Yeah, but you're, you, they'll talk to you, correct? No, they, they will they not they talk wouldn't. to me. I do the anime, you know, the, that you call and you dial and you put the numbers in. Um, All right, well, yeah, whatever but information. they keep calling me because it's three months in the rears right now. Well, whatever information that should be exchanged needs to be exchanged on this, yes. and he's still going to have to, you know, if he just got paid, that money was to go towards that rent for at least September, okay? All right, so why don't we try maybe another status check to see what parties might be able to do to resolve these issues, um, and we still have open discovery. We have the dates out there, and then maybe... Over the next, you know, couple of weeks, you might get some additional information from the doctor to see uh, whether he's going to be able to participate in a meaningful way, even if it's by Skype or video conferencing. And so, I don't know, three weeks, two weeks, hey, six, thirty days. Thirty days. Thirty days would be fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then. There's a lot of documents that I want to get okay. from my All client. Right. Super. Then why don't we uh, do thirty days and. Uh, between counsel, see what you can do to potentially resolve it during that time. Yes, sir. Okay? So, why don't we put it, let me look at my calendar also. I want to put it on a time that one's convenient for both counsel and then one where we can have some time where we're not stuck on my motion calendar. Oh, oh, okay, where? D, 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 D. All right, hold on. What's the date in about 30? Your Honor, I, if I may, I'm actually out of town from the 7th through the 14th. How about, about October? October 20th at 10.30? That's perfect for me. That works for me. All right. Yeah, that's calendar calls. We don't have any set right now. Let's close out that session so we don't have anything else on it. All right, we'll see you then. And does somebody want to prepare an order for today? Who's up next? I, I, I'll do it. Okay, <laughs> all right, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank All right, you, we'll see you back here on the 20th. All right, thank you. Your Honor.